NASA once saw Dream Chaser as the future of American spaceflight, a reusable space plane built to deliver cargo and return safely on any runway. But after five years of delays, it's still waiting for a rocket. Costs are rising, schedules slipping, and NASA's confidence is fading. Has Sierra Space's most ambitious project already reached a breaking point before even leaving Earth? Let's dive right in. When NASA partnered with Sierra Space, it wasn't just another contract. It was a bold bet on a different future. A future where spacecraft don't crash into the ocean, but glide home smoothly on a runway. Where astronauts could return within hours, not days. Where space logistics would finally break free from parachutes and saltwater recovery. At the center of that vision stood one name, Dream Chaser. Back in 2016, when NASA awarded Sierra Space the Commercial Resupply Services II, CRS-2 contract, the idea was revolutionary. Dream Chaser would carry over 5,500 kilograms of cargo to the International Space Station and bring back up to 1,750 kilograms of delicate experiments, medical research, biological samples, high-value components, landing safely at any major airport, this meant scientists could access their work within hours instead of waiting for capsule recovery ships. The efficiency alone could save millions of dollars in months of research time. NASA saw in Dream Chaser not just another spacecraft, but a logistical leap, a bridge between Earth's labs and the microgravity world above. Unlike traditional capsules, Dream Chaser is a lifting body space plane. Based on NASA's 1980s HL-20 design, but completely rebuilt for the 21st century. Its airframe is made of carbon composite, making it both lightweight and durable. Its propulsion system uses non-toxic hydrogen peroxide and ethanol, reducing both environmental risk and maintenance cost. Attached behind it is a detachable cargo module called Shooting Star, responsible for carrying supplies to orbit and safely burning up on re-entry once emptied, keeping Dream Chaser reusable for up to 15 flights. The beauty of this approach was its simplicity. Low cost, clean propellant, fast turnaround. Early cost estimates placed each mission between 90 and $100 million, nearly half the cost of Boeing's Starliner program. For NASA, the equation seemed perfect. Lower cost, higher flexibility, better science return. But while Dream Chaser's concept was visionary, execution would prove far more complex. Dream Chaser's first flight, codenamed Tenacity, was originally scheduled for 2020. Yet one by one, the years slipped away. 2021, 2022, 2023, then 2024 quietly passed without a launch date. Today, the earliest possible target is late 2025, nearly half a decade behind schedule. The irony, the spacecraft itself is almost ready. The real obstacle isn't Dream Chaser, it's the rocket beneath it. Sierra Space had chosen United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur as its ride to orbit. But Vulcan 2 ran into delays, first due to engine certification, then from military priority missions that sidelined commercial payloads. Each slip in Vulcan's schedule dragged Dream Chaser down with it. Switching rockets wasn't simple either. ULA's older Atlas V was being retired and every remaining unit was already assigned, mostly to Boeing's troubled Starliner program. So now the situation borders on absurd. Dream Chaser, the space plane designed for flexibility, is stuck on Earth because it has no rocket left to fly on. Even without the launch issue, Dream Chaser faced brutal technical challenges. A space plane must survive the fiery re-entry of a capsule, the aerodynamic precision of a jet, and the structural endurance of both in a single reusable body. Its landing gear doors, for example, must open through the heat shield mid-re-entry, a critical system once considered a weak point in NASA's shuttle program. Sierra's engineers spent years redesigning it to reduce weight and eliminate failure points. Then came the thermal protection system. Each ceramic tile had to be engineered to survive over 1,600 degrees Celsius, yet remain light enough to allow gliding landings. When one material failed a test, months of redesign followed. Every NASA safety verification added more time, 
more paperwork, and more cost. This was the price of perfection, and it was rising fast. By 2021, Sierra Space had raised an astounding $1.4 billion in private investment, a record-breaking round that briefly made it one of the most valuable space startups in the world. But with great funding comes great expectation. Investors don't pay for delays, they pay for milestones. And each passing year without a launch means no revenue, no returns, and rising skepticism. Internally, Sierra Space has already completed almost every qualification test needed. Structural integrity, vibration trials, acoustic simulations, and thermal vacuum testing. The vehicle tenacity is physically built, fully integrated, and has passed NASA's review. Yet because Vulcan Centaur isn't available, Dream Chaser can't fly. It's a brutal paradox. Technically ready, but operationally grounded. NASA's commercial resupply program depends on multiple providers to ensure redundancy. SpaceX's Dragon has been flawless. Boeing's Starliner, though plagued with issues, at least reached the ISS. Dream Chaser, however, remains Earthbound. NASA still trusts Sierra Space, for now. But with the ISS expected to retire around 2030, every year of delay eats into Dream Chaser's commercial lifespan. If its first flight doesn't happen until late 2025, that leaves barely four years to complete its seven contracted missions before the ISS shuts down. And here lies the real fear inside NASA. If Dream Chaser misses its window, there may be nowhere left for it to go. 7. The comparison. Everyone's talking about SpaceX, Boeing, and Sierra Space started with the same NASA vision, privatized access to space. Yet their outcomes couldn't be more different. SpaceX delivered early, cheap, and reliably. Its iterative design culture allowed rapid learning through failure. Boeing, despite massive funding, stumbled through years of delays and technical errors. Sierra Space took the perfectionist route, Precise, deliberate, and slow. The result? SpaceX became NASA's go-to. Boeing barely holds relevance. Sierra Space sits in the middle, respected, but at risk of becoming forgotten. And in a world where funding follows momentum, being forgotten is the most dangerous position of all. Some industry insiders suspect that Sierra Space's reliance on Vulcan Centaur isn't just unfortunate timing, its structural vulnerability. Vulcan is the U.S. military's next-generation launcher, replacing Atlas and Delta. Government missions get priority, leaving commercial payloads like Dream Chaser perpetually waiting. Could Dream Chaser switch to SpaceX's Falcon 9? Theoretically, yes, but in practice, that would require redesigning the interface, recertifying flight software, and redoing vibration profiles. It's a process that could take years, time Sierra Space simply doesn't have. In other words, Dream Chaser's flexibility exists on paper, not in reality. And if Sierra Space can't break free from Vulcan's schedule, it risks being delayed again, not for engineering reasons, but for politics and launch hierarchy. Behind the company name are hundreds of engineers who once worked on the space shuttle program. For them, Dream Chaser isn't just a spacecraft, it's personal. It's a second chance to prove that America can build something beautiful, reusable, and reliable again. They've endured every delay, every test, and every rumor of cancellation. Many have watched competitors succeed faster with simpler designs, while their own creation sits complete, waiting for one opportunity to prove itself. The spacecraft tenacity is a symbol of that endurance, a name chosen deliberately. It reflects not just the company's persistence, but the spirit of the people behind it. If Dream Chaser succeeds, it will become the first U.S. space plane to reach orbit since the space shuttle retired in 2011. That milestone would restore confidence in NASA's multi-vendor strategy and show the world that innovation doesn't belong to just one company. But if it failed or delays again, the fallout could extend far beyond Sierra Space. Investors could pull back from reusable space plane projects entirely. NASA might double down on SpaceX, creating a near monopoly in orbital logistics. And perhaps most importantly, the public, those who still believe in the magic of flight, could lose faith that there's room for more than one pioneer in the stars.
And this is exactly why Dream Chaser's long delay matters. It's not just another missed deadline. It's a test of how far NASA and private companies can push to keep innovation alive in space. What this means is simple. If Dream Chaser finally flies in 2025, it could restore balance in an industry now dominated by a single player. If it doesn't, the dream of true competition in space may fade for good. The next few months will decide everything. So what do you think? Can Sierra Space turn this around, or is it already too late? Share your thoughts below. This is Space Hub, where we bring you clear, fact-based insights into every major space breakthrough. If you found this valuable, like the video, comment your view, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss the next big story shaping our future in space.